If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. I want to talk to you for just a bit about why I think that Stoneforge Mystic is one of the cards on the modern ban list that can never come off. I put it at a 0% chance to ever come off. But before I get into why, before I give you my estimation, let's talk about some reasons why cards are banned in Modern. Because Modern is a bit of its own beast. It doesn't necessarily apply the same rules or apply them in the same way as other formats. So I look at the ban list, I've looked at it for gracious years now, and I've been thinking about why a card gets banned for well over a year. I've come up with four reasons for a given card. A card might fit more than one of these, but it'll fit at least one of these four reasons. The first one is easy. We'll just knock it out of the way. It doesn't apply to this, but I want to get it out of the way. Cards that make the game take too long. Really only two, as far as I can see, that are on the list that do that. Sensei's Divining Top, of course, because unless your name is Joe Lissette, or Feline Longmore, or Reed Duke, or some Miracle Master, you're probably going to take quite a while doing it over the course of the entire game. So that makes some sense. Second Sunrise is the other one. You can have a 15 minute turn. If you're Stanislav Sivka going through the 15 minute turn and winning the game, yeah, that's awesome to watch, but it also makes it take too long. So that's an easy one to get out of the way. Power level concerns aside, and both of those are still powerful cards, they make the game go on quite a bit too long. Then the other reasons, the, the more serious reasons. The next one is the turn four rule. Now I want to make sure that we're all on the same page here. The turn four rule, I think this is pretty clear, you've probably heard this before. Just to be 100% certain that we're all together on this one, the turn four rule does not mean that you cannot win the game before turn four in modern. Obviously, right? There are plenty of decks that can do that. Storm can do that, Affinity can do that, Infect can do that, weird Goryeo's reanimator decks can do that. So, okay, that, that's fair enough, right? But what it means is that you can't win before turn four too consistently and without giving the opponent the chance to interact. So, I mentioned Infect, it's a pet deck of mine. Infect can win on turn two or three, and it can do so with some consistency by turn three. That's how the deck is built. But it is one of the easier decks to interact with in the format. Any spot removal, any hand attack is going to put a world of hurt on us. We have to play around that sort of thing. Or, Storm may not be the most consistent deck, especially in the very early game. Or, again, Goryeo's Reanimator, not the most consistent deck in the game. So those sorts of things actually do matter. It's not simply winning before turn 4. That said, that's why a lot of fast mana, for instance, is banned in the format. And that's why some cards that we've seen banned more recently are. So, for example, Summer Bloom, because Bloom Titan was a deck that could win on turn three with a fair bit of consistency, and it didn't give the opponent much of a chance to interact. A lot of your spot removal didn't do much against the only real creature in the deck. I know Azusa was there, but a primeval titan, you're not bolting it, you're going to have to double bolt it. Path to Exile will get rid of it, sure, but even then, any spot removal, they can just respond by going and getting Teleria West and a Bounce Land, bounce it back, transmute it for Summoner's Pact, and go off again. It's not the end of the world for them. So that was a card, that makes sense why that would be banned then, right? And this, you can go through the list, many of them meet this qualification. Would Stoneforge Mystic? No. Off the top of my head, even in Legacy, I can only think of one deck that uses Stoneforge Mystic to go off before turn four. And it's Cephalid Breakfast, where Turn 2, Stoneforge to get Shuko, turn 3, Cephalid Illusionist, Shuko, blah, 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 combo off. And even then, you couldn't do that in Modern because one Cephalid Illusionist isn't around, two Dread Return is banned. Alright, so no, the turn 4 rule is not really an issue with Stoneforge Mystic, but then we get into the last two, and that's where it does matter. The next one is Oversaturation. It's not necessarily that the card is too powerful, it's that it's powerful enough that it sees too much play. And we can see this for a number of cards. So, for example, Splinter Twin. I know there are still lots of people that love Splinter Twin and wish it came back. Splinter Twin was not the most prevalent card in the meta. I think at the time that it was banned, it was about an eighth 
of the format, of the competitive format anyway. It was prominent enough that you had to play around it, but you didn't have to play Splinter Twin in order to win. That said, at about that amount, they deemed it explicitly when they made the announcement oversaturated, that it cramped format diversity. Now there is a threshold, not necessarily every card that's super played gets to be banned. So for example, you wouldn't consider banning Lightning Bolt, even though at least at one point it was the most played non-land card in Modern. Lightning Bolt is an interaction piece. It gets a bit of a pass. If it's 100% in the meta, you're going to ban it, right? But if it's 40%, is that too much? Probably not. Lightning Bolt is one of those cards, similar to Force of Will and Legacy, that helps to keep the format in check. Similar to Fatal Push or Thoughtseize or Path to Exile, etc, etc, etc. It helps to keep the format more or less fair. I would argue, anyway. Now, on the other hand, if Bloodbraid Elf and Jace the Mind Sculptor, and or Jace the Mind Sculptor, were to be re-banned, it would probably because, be because of this reason. It's not that they're necessarily too powerful. I don't think anyone would argue that they're not powerful. Obviously, Bloodbraid Elf and Jace the Mind Sculptor are some of the most powerful cards in Magic's history, and yet, it may not be that they're broken. It may just be that they're too plagued. There is plenty of precedent for this. I mentioned Splinter Twin earlier. Lots of people would argue that Deathrite Shaman, while powerful, didn't cross that threshold either, but Deathrite Shaman was banned. Lots of decks could play Deathrite Shaman. The other side of the coin is that a card, and by the way, I'll say while I'm on this point, Golgari Grave Troll was rebanned probably for this reason. It wasn't necessarily that it was too powerful, but it became too prevalent once again. Even though lots of decks could hate on graveyards using interaction pieces like Grafdigger's Cage and Relic of Progenius and Rest in Peace and so on and so forth, but it became too much. You maybe could have hit something else like Faithless Looting, fair enough, but they chose Golgari Grave Troll. The other side of this coin is that if you look at the original ban list in Modern, there were cards that were on it that were later unbanned. Part of the reason they were on there in the first place was because this was the concern. So, for example, Wild Nakadal or Sword of the Meek, or Bitter Blossom. I'll, I'll focus on Bitter Blossom for a second. It was thought to be a card that would make Fairies broken, or Blue Black or Blue Black X Control broken, or Tokens broken. It's not that it would make any one deck too strong, it's that you would pretty much have to pay, play a Bitter Blossom deck. And it, maybe there were more, maybe there was some Devotion Shell or something else. But Bitter Blossom, while powerful, ended up not being the end of the world. For a number of reasons. The same thing is true of Wild Nakadal. Obviously a powerful card, not quite the end of the world. Sword of the Meek is in a combo that doesn't go infinite, but is extremely powerful, making a lot of creatures, gaining you a lot of life, but it wasn't broken. And the concern for many was that Bloodbraid Elf and Jace the Mind Sculptor don't cross that threshold. I think that Stoneforge Mystic fits in about the same place that Bloodbraid Elf would. Would it be played? Yes, obviously. It's a powerful card. Would it be too played? Probably. I would think that it would probably be. But that's actually not even the most important reason, because we still have one more to go, and this one applies to Stoneforge Mystic more than almost anything else on the ban list. Does it hamper design space? When R&D is designing a card in a standard environment, you know what they're thinking about a lot? Standard. You know what they're not thinking about a lot? Vintage. If it happens to break a card in vintage, like Paradoxical Outcome might have, c'est la vie. Oh well. It's not the end of the world. They're obviously going to focus on standard, and as the format gets older, they can focus on it less. But they have to pay attention to modern because it is an outlet for players after they've gotten past that initial phase of playing to invest in cards. Hey look, I'm buying a standard deck. Oh, it's rotated, I've lost that value. If I don't want to keep this happening, I need to invest in something like modern, like commander, or some eternal format. And so they have to look at modern to make sure that it's fair. When Birthing Pod was around, this was part of the reason why it was banned. It was saturation too, to a certain extent. But every creature that they printed had to go through a birthing pod test. They had to make sure, as best they could, that it wasn't going to break birthing pod wide open. And Siege Rhino was in the last set before birthing pod was banned. Siege Rhino made the mid-range game in that deck 
too strong while also giving you something that could go Siege Rhino into Archangel of Thune, for instance, for a combo turn. Oh, every creature had to go through that test, and you could do that to every single creature if you're R&D, or you could ban the enabler that's hampering your design space. Stoneforge Mystic does the same thing, but not with creatures, with equipments. There's more space for them to design more equipments that are powerful, give us a good variety of mechanics, etc. If they're not worried about breaking a white demonic tutor that's a 1-2 as well. If Stoneforge Mystic is in Legacy, that's okay. It's an older format, there's more power overall, it's having you deal with Forcible. If it's in Modern, and you can go and get uh, a Batter Skull or Umzo's Gita is not around, but even if it was, if it weren't, you know, the Sword Cycle or something else that they invent in the future. If that's the concern, it makes more sense to ban the card that's hampering that design space. And because of those reasons, power level, perhaps, it might be a little too saturated in a format like Modern. If you're a white deck, you're probably going to want to play Stoneforge Mystic, that makes sense. In a similar way that if you are a blue deck and it's not a combo deck like Storm, you want to play Jace the Mind Sculptor. If you are a mid-range deck, especially if you're already inclined to green or red, you want to do Bloodbraid Elf, etc. In that sense, yeah, Stoneforge Mystic would probably see a lot of play, but more importantly, similarly to Birthing Pod, it would constrain R&D too much in actually designing cards that they could bring into the format. So, those are my reasons as to why Stoneforge is never, ever coming off the modern ban list. Now watch me eat my words in a couple of years. <laughs> I will see you later, Magic Community. Take care. Bye-bye.